All right, guys. Thank you for joining me. And uh, yeah, sorry for the little delay. I had a little accident in the kitchen. Nothing major. Just the the seal on the coffee machine decided it wasn't going to seal anymore, and water went everywhere. Um, so I had to get that taken care of and uh, finish brewing the coffee. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. Um, so I've got a new instrument today. And um, I'm also going to do some updates on the Virtual Wind Symphony Project, the Wind Ensemble, whatever we want to call it. Um, but uh, I'm taking a sip of the coffee. And uh, and <laughs> you'll notice in the title, it's a virtual unboxing. Well, um, because it's uh, obviously not in a uh, box. Um, and the reason for it is... Uh, well, I, I've, I've already seen the instrument. I went and picked this up just a little bit ago. It's um, uh, I'm not going to be able to play it or demonstrate it. Um, but uh, so the full story is I got a message um, earlier in the week, last week. I don't know what days mean anymore. Um, but anyway, so I got a message from uh, one of my old teachers, um, uh, Kevin Hall, who is the principal bassoon of the Fort Worth Symphony, and he uh, was my Baroque bassoon teacher. And anyway, he called me and said, hey, we're cleaning house. Uh, I've got this old Baroque bassoon here. Um, it's uh, a kit instrument, and I don't know what to do with it. And we're moving, and uh, if you don't come pick it up, it's just going to go in the trash. And said, okay. Um, so I uh, finally had a day off from uh, from my day job, and I drove down this morning to pick it up. And uh, so yeah, uh, let's go ahead and unbag the instrument, as uh, Ratchet says. And um, so uh, yeah, I haven't even assembled it yet, so you're gonna kind of see it as I see it. We've got. Um, so the first thing you will notice is um, there are no keys on this. Um, and that's going to be one of the uh, projects with this thing is I am going to have to make all the keys. Uh, luckily, Baroque bassoons are, um, only have six keys. And I should be able to do all of that. So there's going to be quite a bit of stuff I have to do on here. Uh, but we'll get everything out real quick and we'll just go ahead and assemble the instrument. All right. So here we go. The Baroque Bassoon. And at some point I'll probably do a full video kind of talking about the difference, differences between the modern bassoon and the Baroque bassoon. Um, it's obviously going to be a very, very different instrument. All right, so there we go. Uh, a new to me Baroque bassoon. Uh, when I get this all um, rebuilt, it is going to be a um, six key instrument. Uh, original Baroque bassoons were anywhere between four, five, and very late ones were six. Um, the, the sixth key is uh, pretty essential for most repertoire, so they go ahead and add it. Um, I'm sorry, five key. Yeah, five key. The six key was is uh, from the classical era. So most Baroque bassoons were four key. And yeah, so yeah, I've got to remember my Baroque bassoon history. Um, but uh, yeah, so it um, it's missing a lot of things. It's um, I'm going to have to create uh, the bands for um, the top of the uh, boot joint, the bottom of the boot joint, and um, possibly uh, going to remove some of the wood down here and just, uh, um, when I talked to Kevin this morning, he um, was going to 
remove about a centimeter or so of wood here so that the width of the the brass bands here are the same here and here and uh, there's going to be a brass band up here as well um, and I'm going to have to uh, cork the inside here as well um, he also uh, with it threw in Not one, not two, but three vocals. So, um, and honestly, I cannot even remember which one he said originally went with this. And I don't think he actually knew which one originally went with it. So, uh, huh. that one definitely did not go with it. That's a Guntram Wolf vocal right there. I'm going to need to look at that one more closely. Uh, I didn't e did not even look. Um, if that's the case, that right there is going to be a damn nice vocal. That's, um, that's a uh, Wolf 10 PX343. So I'll have to do some research on that one. Um, on my regular bassoon, I, I play um, you know a very nice wolf vocal. Um, see if there's any marking on this one. Nope, and we'll see if there's any marking on this one. And no, my guess is this one right here is probably the original. So yeah, new baroque bassoon and. Um, amazingly light instrument and i don't know yet if this instrument is going to be a440 or a415 knowing kevin uh it is most likely a415 which is uh, going to be at the, the correct pitch um but anyway so uh yeah so that is my new baroque bassoon and i'm gonna it's gonna take me quite a while to get this thing uh restored uh, I got to build the keys. I'm going to have to kind of do some design work and kind of figure out exactly how I'm going to put the keys on. Um, but that's going to be a, uh, a prime time, something for later. Um, and uh, I'm also going to need to do some uh, research in the best way to kind of restore the wood on it. Do I have a reed around to play into it? No, I couldn't find uh, my Baroque bassoon reed that I have not modified. And I can't really do anything because uh, the boot's not plugged up. So uh, I will have to, once I can find my bassoon, uh, my uh, original Baroque bassoon reed, um, I will do some play testing on it. Uh, but as of right now, uh, uh, it's just not going to be playable. The other thing, though, and this is going to relate more to the Great Bassoon Project, um, something else came with it. And this is a set of tools that he had lying around. And this is a little piece of bassoon history. Um, set this aside. Um, what, he, uh, what I got is a set of bore um, measuring tools. Uh, these are designed to measure the interior uh, diameter and dimensions of the bassoon's bore. Um, so I'm gonna have to uh, do some experimenting on these, uh, but th this set of uh, of measuring devices was um, built by um, uh, K. David Van Hosen, who was the longtime professor of bassoon at uh, Eastman, uh, one of the great bassoon pedagogues out there. And um, so, uh, yeah, and these are going to be great for um, some of the, the great bassoon project in measuring. Uh, accuracy and whatnot and really getting a good idea of true dimensions 
And there's, I haven't even looked at all of these, uh, but yeah, so there's all sorts of devices here. And I have um, devices, and I, I talked to Richard a little bit about this, but these are um, measuring devices that are big enough to even work in, uh, in the biggest joints of the sub bassoon. So a lot of uh, measuring tools here. These will come in really, really handy for instrument design, repair, all that fun stuff. So that's going to take some uh, experimenting, but I will uh, have some fun with that. All right. So the next thing is I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, virtual wind ensemble project. Uh, where we're recording uh, Symphony 2. And it's coming along. It's uh, coming along a little slower than I would would like. But you know what? Coordinating as many people as uh, I am on this, uh, that's not unexpected. Um, it's, it is a absolutely massive project, and the people who are working on it are absolutely wonderful human beings and they're all made of awesome um, and to that I've been getting in some absolutely phenomenal uh, tracks and recordings the, the the one that blew me away this week is uh, first horn came in all the whole uh, session for first horn and there is a particularly nasty passage in uh, the dream of war that is just difficult as hell on horn and uh, our first horn player nailed it um so um i may be able to uh play some here just a little bit but uh i thought that i would uh first kind of uh show uh, the the seating chart that I'm going to be using. Now, of course, this being a virtual um, wind ensemble, um, it's going to be a virtual seating chart. But we'll go ahead and kind of show you uh, what that looks like. All right. So hopefully on, on the screen now, you should be seeing the seating chart if I'm able to use my software correctly. All right. So um, let's just kind of take a look at how this is arranged. Uh, because it is such a massive ensemble, um, I had to really kind of develop this seating chart. Now, I've already, uh, since I made this, and this is a seating chart I made last year sometime, um, I've already made some tweaks to it. Um, but, um, so basically it is in one, two, three, four, five rows. It's, it's just the winds and uh, piano and harp. So let's kind of take a look at the first row. So we've got the conductor right in the center. If you go, let's go all the way to um, to the right hand side. The conductor's right hand side on the first row. That's going to be the bass oboe, tenor oboe, however you want to call it. So we're going to have five oboes there sitting to the conductor's right. In fact, I have set this up exactly like a um, an orchestral wind section. So oboes and flutes are the first row. So five oboes on the conductor's right-hand side, and then on the conductor's left-hand side are uh, four of the flutes. So it's piccolo one, piccolo two, flute one, flute two. The other three flutes, alto flute one, alto flute two, tenor flute are right behind them. They're on row two. They're in the seats on the left, one, two, and three. Now let's go uh, see... Uh, row two on the right side and there are six bassoon chairs though in reality it really would break down to five bassoon chairs uh, on the far outside corner is the sub contra bassoon 
Um, and then Contra Bassoon, Bassoon 3, Bassoon 2, Bassoon 1, Tenor Bassoon. Um, and then you get to your clarinet. So Tenor Bassoon will sit next to E flat clarinet, then C clarinet, B flat 1, B flat 2, and A. And then the A clarinet sits next to the alto flute. So that's the whole second row. The leftover flutes and then the high clarinets and all the bassoons. Then the third row. The third row is comprised entirely of the low clarinets and the saxes. Low clarinets are on the left side, saxes are on the right side. And it just goes in the center, the high voice, and then move out. So the dead center, just right at dead center on the third row, you'll get the soprano sax, the soprano sax, alto one, alto two, C tenor, B flat tenor, baritone, and bass. On the clarinet side, it's uh, F alto one, F alto two, Tenor one, tenor two, bass one, bass two, great bass, contra bass. So in this, um, because of how it's set up, the contra bass clarinet is actually on the exact opposite side of the ensemble of the contra bassoon, which is kind of unusual, though not so much in an orchestral setting. Though it will should work just fine. The contra clarinet is going to be right there next to the piano and the harp, and you can see the piano and the harp are on the far left side. Let's go to the fourth row. Now, fourth row is where the changes have been made. Uh, if you go over to the left side, you'll see um, um, all, uh, there's actually two small rows of five each. Uh, that's actually going to get changed to a row of six and a row of four. The row of six will be up front. That's gonna be the six horns. Horn one is gonna go to the interior and then horn six is going to go to the exterior. The small row behind them of four is going to be the two alto horns and the two baritone horns. The, in the dead center in the back, what's on row uh, four, uh, is uh, the six trumpets. And uh, ST15RM, yes, I did get a Baroque bassoon. Yes, so yep, yeah, here it is, my, my new Baroque bassoon. It is absolutely not in plain condition though. It's got lots of work that's gonna have to be done to it, like making all the keys. All right, so on the left, on the right, conductor's right hand side in the back, there are two rows. One of the rows is gonna be the five trombones, and the other is gonna be the six tubas. So the five trombones on the interior is alto, tenor one, tenor two, bass trombone, contra bass trombone. And then behind them are the six tubas, the two flugelhorns, the two euphoniums, bass tuba, contra bass tuba. And uh, Ratchet uh, jokingly says, where's all the percussion going? Um, and the percussion is just going to be kind of strewn about in the back, however best it would fit in the hall. Uh, is someone playing tenor flute in the virtual wind ensemble? Yes, that was one of the first spots that got filled. So... Uh, that part is uh, in the process of being recorded now. The flute parts that I do not have absolute confirmation on are piccolo one, piccolo two. Piccolo two is going to be the hardest one because it alternates between piccolo and G treble flute. And I'm talking to someone who I think will be able to do it. Uh, and then I just need piccolo one covered. That's uh, piccolo one being covered is the only woodwind part that I do not have anybody signed up for so anyway that's the seating chart for uh the the forest of dreams it's uh, it is a absolute massive ensemble uh but as you can see it balances out pretty nicely everybody uh the majority of the low instruments are on the right hand side of the ensemble uh with the exception of the low clarinets that go on the left side and there's going to be some uh, call and response back and forth between them. Uh, Benjamin, uh, I, I'd have to talk to you about that. Uh, uh, the, the, I'm, re I'm really looking for uh, professional players on, on that part or at least college students. Uh, these are uh, extremely extremely difficult um, parts and uh, with piccolo I'm, I am I'm gonna be pretty picky 
So I, I'm looking for like professional level players. Um, but anyway, um, let me see if I can pull up and play for you some of what's been recorded so far in the uh, in the forest of dreams and what i think i'm going to do is first i'm going to plug in my headphones so hope you don't get any feedback and hopefully this does not stop the screen it's done that before okay so i am going to uh open up a file here and I'm going to play a little bit of track 11. This is um, what track 11, this is the final track, sounded like as of a couple of weeks ago. We test, test. Are we, are we back? Uh, there we go. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. Uh, the uh, streaming software decided to crash on me. Okay, so we're back. Um, so what I am going to play is um, just a... And uh, this is, you know, only maybe under 10% of what's... Uh, of the players there. However, for interesting scoring issues, uh, what you are going to hear is the first time uh, that we will ever get to hear a sub contrabassoon in a large ensemble setting. Uh, Richard uh, got to me the uh, faux sub contrabassoon part. Uh, he digitally created it um, using uh, regular contrabassoon and just uh, uh, manipulated it down an octave. But you'll be able to kind of hear in the mix um, how much that will add to it. So I'm going to go ahead and play um, just kind of the beginnings of the final track. Oh, 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 yeah, there, that, we'll try that now. Um, you can hear me again. Uh, sorry about that. I had my mic muted. Let, so. Now I've got it. I had to switch an audio setting. Okay. All right. We're 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 good to go now. So here is um, part of uh, track 11.
Okay. Um, yes. Uh, so there's a little bit more coming in here. Just a second. Uh, so what, what parts you were hearing there? A clarinet, uh, E flat tenor clarinet one, E flat tenor clarinet two, bass clarinet one, B flat contra clarinet. Bassoons two, three, contra bassoon, sub contra bassoon. You're also hearing the C tenor saxophone, uh, soprano saxophone, and B flat tenor saxophone. Um, and that was recorded on the 4th. Uh, so that's everything I had in it on the 4th, and that's been two weeks now nearly. Um, I, now, I also now have bass saxophone to add to that. I've got horn one to add to that. Um, uh, but yeah, I've got quite, quite a few more parts to add in to that. Um, and we're just, it's slowly, slowly building up. Uh, the way I'm actually doing the, um, the, uh, the mixing is typically by instrument sections. Um, so let me give you an example of one that I've, from high to low, I've got A clarinet, uh, F alto, basset horn one, basset horn two, which Jared is playing on that. I've got uh, tenor clarinet one, tenor clarinet two. I've got bass clarinet one. I've got contrabass clarinet on. Uh, so you're going to hear uh, the mix right now. And uh, this is going to be a mix without the reverb on. idea of just what the clarinet section will sound like. I think this is probably Jared's first time hearing it put together uh, as he's playing to uh, the critical parts there. In fact, the, the melody you heard, that was both uh, Jared. The contrabass clarinet you hear is Jason Alder. Fantastic uh, bass and contrabass player, that player. Yeah, there, there's some noise that I'm slowly trying to get rid of. Um, Couple of the tracks came in with some extra noise on them that are that they're it's good playing but just there's some background noise that I'm just gonna have to edit out Is, uh, first symphony recorded using the subconscious. Yes, it's the first symphony written that uses the subconscious.
small sample. There's a lot of editing that I'm going to have to do on that. Um, but it's coming together as I get more and more parts recorded. Uh, for clarinets on that track, I'm still waiting on bass clarinet 2, contra alto clarinet or great bass clarinet. Um, and then E flat, C, B flat 1, and B flat 2. So there's still six more clarinet parts to get added to what you just heard. Uh, but anyway, uh, I thought I'd just share some of that, and despite uh, the, the technical difficulties, um, I think, uh, yeah, it's, uh, so that's what it is. I'll go ahead and sign off for this, this afternoon about all the technical difficulties and delays, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's live for you. All right, thanks so much.